So to get started, let's jump into the internal folder here. Now in the internal folder, I have four different packages. Now, firstly, the app one is your core application layer. In here, it will hold things like your entities, your core business logic, um, your repository implementations will be used throughout your core service methods. And typically how I structure the application is they, the, any kind of write application will have a service method in here, like this create account service method. Um, and this one just, you know, takes an email password primitive, turns them to your uh, value objects, uh, passes them to a factory method to an entity uh, using your value objects. And then it will call methods, which I would like to think of as kind of events or actions. So creating an account is an action that you might take on the account entity. Um, and that's why I have a method for that. Now, this uh, create method could fire off an event. Uh, but really, it just kind of at the moment, it just sets fields uh, needed to create an account before I pass that over to a repo to insert that. Um, very quickly, again, I've got an email value object and I've just got this this repo uh, file, which I separate my repository methods into readers and writers. Now, I got this from another project, um, Tofu, which I'll link below. It's a really, really nice way of kind of separating read and write operations to enable your adapters to uh, have access to read methods but not have access to your write methods and i'll show you why in a second um and then service just simply initializes a new service and just takes in anything it needs so currently it just takes in a repository um so that's kind of the basic app layer the application layer also defines some custom errors that you might use throughout the application so it just kind of obviously removes any need to have any dependencies in your core application It's just kind of your own errors you might have an invalid input you might have uh, error forbidden someone's not allowed to do something you might have different errors as well uh, moving on i have this grpc folder now this one uh, very quickly at first i have this kind of base handler object now this is where you can see i actually use the reader part of the repositories um, and why this is super useful is if I quickly jump to the actual gRPC methods here, there's two operations that this gRPC user service currently exposes. One of them being a signup method. Now, the signup method obviously involves a certain amount of business logic, right? It's inserting to a repository, so it's a write operation, but it has to go through your value objects, your you know your entity factories, um, your core business logic before it should really go through your database right we'll get into your database or fire off an event or whatever it needs to do right um and that's why we, we want to enforce that any adapters such as this glpc one do actually call the service methods rather than going directly to the repository right um but on the other hand a read operation typically there's not any business logic involved so this one here this find account by id well it i can just take the id from the grpc request pass that directly to the repository and that's going to return me the you know, the user or the account entity, whatever it is, right? And then I can use that to uh, respond in gRPC. Um, and that just saves me having to create a whole service method just to go and get some data. Uh, if you do care a little bit about validation, there's no harm in importing your value objects here just to kind of validate they've passed a valid user ID, for example. Um, or again, as I say, if you do have some actual business rules around what who can access data or some things you actually do with request objects and yeah you probably you know you probably do want to put it in your core but for cases like this one where say i've already gone through an auth service and i know the user can get their user well then i might as well just call the find account repo method right and they can go and get their their user and i can return that without having to go through any other layers um so that's kind of why you expose the reader and you expose your writer right um, it just enforces that kind of those kind of rules um, so that's kind of, yeah, this is kind of how your core business logic is injected into the gRPC methods, um, which is nice because obviously, ideally, the create account service method would have full kind of test coverage where it makes sense to. Um, so you'll know that this is kind of tested and then you can just plug that into, you know, your gRPC adapter or any other adapters you might want to expose. Um, so the gRPC side of this, obviously, I just expose a very basic gRPC server here. Um, so, you know, just spins up a gRPC server, sets some ports, injects the base handler into it. Um, so that way each handler gets access to this handler. The handler um, so they can do things like return errors um, and have access to the repositories and services. Um, so the, as for the error handling from gRPC, uh, 
if you remember the application errors I mentioned a little while ago, uh, that's where I use them here, right? So I'm switching on the error type and I'm just saying, right, is it a repository not found? So the resource hasn't been found. Then obviously we can map that to a gRPC status code. Likewise with your invalid arguments, permission denied and any other ones you might have. Um, and then obviously I expose a simple health method uh, just so if this is running in say a Kubernetes cluster, you can have your health check uh, or liveness check and uh, be sure your pod is working. Um, and then, yeah, this is the kind of repository layer. So again, this is an example service. There's not actually any SQL in here yet. These are things I'll probably add uh, to kind of get a more complete example for you all. Um, but yeah, an empty user repository this would have your sql uh, queries in it and that's pretty much it right again this this would also return your kind of application slash repository errors so you'll see here there's this repository package currently it just holds a not found error but it could hold your conflict errors or any other kind of errors you might need to return from a repository layer um and that's kind of it right if we jump to the command main.go file here uh, just very quickly you'll notice that I kind of initialize my Postgres repository, inject that into the core application layer. So again, that means if I don't want to use Postgres, I want to, I want to switch to MongoDB for whatever reason, you can do that just by implementing a, a MongoDB repository, uh, pass that to your application layer, they get passed onto your handler service, and the handler repo again just takes in the reader part, so it only has access to read methods here. And then, uh, you know, spin up the gRPC service and uh, inject your handlers. Uh, as for the proto stuff for gRPC, I have all that in this PKG proto package. Uh, so I just define the proto object here. So I've got my sign up request, sign up response, user response, etc. Uh, this is the gRPC service that we implemented in the gRPC layer. Um, and then this is the health uh, one as well, the health service, right? And to make life really easy for me again i just use a make file to generate the proto for that so i get the jo the go uh, code spat out uh, via the protoc cli um and that's kind of it really that is a very high level overview of a grpc microservice in golang um, and hopefully again you've got some value out of it oh one other thing i do expose a docker file um because if this is going to run as a microservice, the chances are it's going to be dockerized and running in a cluster somewhere or something. Um, but that's it. That is an example of a gRPC microservice in Go. Uh, if you've enjoyed it and it's given you an idea on how you're going to go forward with your services, please drop a like and I'll see you in the next video.